What's up, guys? Excited to be here. Uh, thanks for tuning in. This is a very important topic in 2018. <clears throat> and you're actually crazy if you're not getting involved in creating content or documenting your journey or education-based marketing in 2018 because uh, it's adapt or die in this new economy. And people talk about pushing out a ton of content. Some people talk about only push out quality content. The key is doing both and making sure it's as relevant and engaging as possible so people are hooked. I often promote people that I believe in on, on different platforms and I tell them, once I promote you and they see your account, they're either gonna stay and love what you do and can stay consistent and always follow you or they're gonna unfollow you and not get engaged because your content's either not consistent, not congruent to who you are, your brand, and not engaging. So you can get people to your page, but to keep them and to consistently build the content or build the, uh, the engagement, takes some specific skill, strategy, and intention, all right? And I'll tell you, a lot of people are doing it wrong and doing it backwards right now. So I'm going to give you just what's worked for me. And I've been around a lot of uh, people that are crushing the content game, asking questions. And I've, I've been borderline obsessed this last year on just how to create great content that keeps people engaged and uh, creates obviously a good clientele. So I'm going to talk about the biggest mistakes that I've seen, uh, different types of content, different platforms. Um, five keys to creating valuable content and then some of my best practices for different platforms. So Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, um, YouTube, Snapchat, things like that. Go ahead and comment um, if you understand the importance of social media and creating content right now because if you don't put yourself out of business or at least try, someone else will. So here's what you have to understand. There's more opportunity than ever before and this is the best time in human history to build a life on your terms and to be an entrepreneur and to, and to help your company rise above the noise if you understand these things. Fortune says, I think it was like a month ago, there's 1,700 new millionaires created every single day in the US. And when the economy fluctuates or goes up and down, the money doesn't disappear, it just transfers to the successful people who are adapting and adjusting to the new times. Okay, so here's some of the biggest mistakes I've seen in the previous year or two. Um, one is making content for them and making content that they think people want, but they haven't done any research or due diligence. And they're fulfilling their own needs and their own insecurities, not the clients or customers. The likelihood of the marketplace responding because you want something or you think they want something is obsolete. Right, that's why you have to test and try different content. There's a lot of different content. There's video, there's written, there's snippets, there's swipe ups, there's short and long term, um, there's polls and surveys, there's uh, tactical value, there's lifestyle and a documentation. There's a lot of different content. And your job as an entrepreneur is to kind of figure out which content is most relevant to your audience and your target market that you want to start obviously marketing to or attracting, right? So that's the biggest mistake is making content that they think people want, but not actually testing or doing due diligence. Two is not being intentional enough or not being consistent where they'll post something, they'll go crazy for like three days posting, then they'll get busy and then a week goes by and they don't post. It's very tough to keep a consistent engagement and a consistent fan base and a consistent image for your brand if you're super inconsistent. Now, you don't have to be doing the social media. You can hire someone. There's a lot of young entrepreneurs that have studied social media and know the trends, know the algorithms, know the things that actually help uh, increase your follower base the authentic way. I'm, I'm not big at all on hacking or doing the fake way where I think you can buy followers. I'm not into that. And some accounts are super sketchy and I'm confused how they have 300,000 followers and, and 27 people on their live, right? So I'm talking about the actual accounts that were built the right way, okay? So um, that's the big key. Thinking they need professional edits is a big, big mistake. I see some of the biggest accounts on the planet, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, they're just doing videos literally from their phone. They're like this, they're doing their videos from their phone and they're getting a ton of engagement. Then I see people doing hours of these professional edits and the edits look so perfect and they get no engagement. So you don't need to have professional edits. 
Okay, you don't need professional edits. You can do them from your iPhone. You can take anytime you have a, a thought that you feel will help somebody or something that you feel is a breakthrough you've had, just pull out your phone. Hey, I just had this recent breakthrough. I was at this mastermind and these are some things that I, I caught. Here's my biggest tip from this mastermind. Here's my biggest tip from this video I watched. If you can shorten people's learning curve, if you can help people increase their time they have with their family, if you can get someone a real result, they're gonna follow you consistently. <clears throat> so if you went to an hour mastermind, if you listen to a half hour podcast and you took one tip that's gonna help you, literally take out your phone and be like, this is the biggest tip, put it out. You will not believe which ones catch wind and which ones maybe go viral, right? But the biggest mistake I've seen is the fear of what people will think. Not putting out content because I don't feel like it's valuable, because I, I, me, me, it's not about you. If you want to be an influencer, if you want to be an entrepreneur that impacts a lot of people, it's not about you. It's about the people you impact. It's about your brand, your service. It's about your customers, about exceeding expectations. So the reality is who cares if you feel like doing content or not? And who cares if you think you're going to look weird? It's not about you. That's the biggest thing. It's not about you. It's about the people that actually you're impacting. So that's the biggest key about content is not fearing what people think. Don't, you don't need professional edits. You need to put out content that is relevant and congruent to who you are. And one of the biggest things I've seen this switch in the last couple months, two things. One, Facebook doesn't like quote pictures anymore. Okay. So if you put quote pictures, they're not going to share that. The algorithm is not going to pick it up. And a lot of accounts are still doing quote pictures. They don't like those anymore. That's just a proven fact. If you look at the Mark Zuckerberg updates and his live speech from a month or two ago, they don't like that. You want to do less of just giving tips and value and more of documentation of your journey. Document what you're doing. Do you see a lot of YouTubers just documenting their journey. And there's a lot, of, if you look up the youngest millionaires on YouTube, there's like tons of multimillionaire young under 21 uh, entrepreneurs that are making a ton of money from just documenting their journey. Okay. So it's not just about giving value and, and educating them based on your marketing. It's actually about documenting your journey of from going maybe from the bottom to rising above the noise as an entrepreneur. Okay. So let's go over the different types of content. Once again, <clears throat> um, video. Okay. There's video, there's written content so you can get published in entrepreneur magazine Forbes. And we can kind of talk about how to do that. Um, but you need to know once again, which one your audience is most engaged in There's snippets snippets are like you have a video on YouTube and you simplify that and you take 60 seconds of the video or you do a quick 60 second video right here and you post it on Instagram. That's called a snippet. There is swipe ups. So when you swipe up on Instagram, that's when you put a video and I, you used to have to be verified. I don't think you have to be verified anymore because a lot of people that aren't verified can swipe up. So research and figure out a swipe up, but swipe up is like, when you have a video like this and if they swipe up, they go to the actual website. That's a big, big key. Also polls and surveys. You can ask your audience what they like better, which content they like better. So start doing your due diligence and research and really start thinking about what questions to ask your audience. Because once again, the likelihood of the marketplace responding because you want something is obsolete. Okay. And the uh, mistake I see is people promoting their expertise and what they're good at and not the solution to the customer's problems you're trying to fulfill. No one cares about what you've done. They care if you can help them or not. So don't talk about all you've done. Talk about the solution that you can help solve or the biggest issue that the customer or your potential clients having <clears throat> huge key, right? So I dive into content before you start creating content online, contents, anything you put online that someone else sees that adds value, right? I think you have to be sold on content. If you're not sold on content and you're not sold on one of the biggest ways to position yourself as the leading authority, position your brand as the go-to brand or position yourself as the expert, you have to have congruent content out there. People always ask me, how do I get booked for more speeches? How do I sell more copies of my book? How do I market this? The answer is always put out more relevant content that helps people that adds value that brings them back to what you do. The worst thing you can be right now in this society <clears throat> in entrepreneurship is just another worst thing, just another content creator, just another real estate agent. Hey, what do you do? I am a speaker. Oh, cool. So is everybody else. What do you do? 
I'm a mortgage broker. Oh, so is everyone else. What do you do? I'm a real estate agent. So is everyone else. No, no. You want to be the agent. You want to be the content creator. You want to be the YouTuber. And how you do that is you figure out what makes your brand, what makes your blog, what makes your vlog, your journey, your product or service different. So if I'm asking somebody and, and they're trying to sell me on their services, I say, why should I choose you or your company? This happens a lot with videographers and people that are starting social media marketing agencies. There's hundreds, if not thousands of, of people every single day that are starting brands, starting social media marketing agencies, and 98% don't rise above the noise. They, they can't make a living. They stay broke, 98%. How do the 2% rise above the noise and actually make money? It's putting out the right content and understanding exactly what the customer needs and knowing what their differentiating factor is. So if I ask you right now, if you were selling me on your service, I wanted to pay for your services, I would say, what makes your business different? Or why should I choose your business? Why should I watch your vlog or your series? Why should I subscribe to your channel? Why should I hire you for this versus every other person that does what you do in the world? And also another key is any clientele, when you're newer, any clientele that's your ideal clientele, you wanna give, give your services away free for the first couple weeks, for the first couple months, and prove yourself. And if they like it, not, not only will they share, but they'll pay you. I think there's been four or five people on my team in the last year that have proved themselves first and they're all getting paid now. One person did video for me. He checked out the video or he uh, did free pictures for me, free photo shoot videos for one month. And I'm like, I'm going to pay you because you're so good. Now he's making a couple thousand dollars a month. If he would have asked me right away without having any experience with me and said, Hey, I charge this. I'd love to do video for you. It's like, I have a ton of people who want to do video, but when you prove yourself and you're so confident in your services and you have great content to where people can actually look at your social media and get a grasp of exactly what you do. Here's the goal here. When someone looks at, at your social media, is it congruent? Does it portray an amazing image of exactly what your expertise and what your skills and what your talent does? Does it portray an accurate image of who you are? Because <clears throat> a lot of times it doesn't. And from people not responding to what makes your business different, it makes me realize that most people don't know why their business is different. And that's why they're not gonna get to seven figures or even six figures sometimes. But like I said, you have to know what makes your business different and what makes your positioning valuable. So here's a couple things that makes your positioning valuable that can help you rise above the noise. Number one is your experience and perspective. Number two is how well you simplify and systemize content. Number three is how consistent you are in the marketplace. Number four is how many places you are in the marketplace. Number five is how current and relevant your brand feels in the marketplace. How many advocates and raving fans you have. Uh, how long you've been adding value. And of course, your energy, your passion, and your authenticity for what you do. But out of those eight or nine things, six of the nine have to do with content online. Right, so you need to sell yourself on content online, one. Two, you need to figure out what platforms are most relevant to your audience. So find the best, most relevant communication channels that are most relevant to your audience and test. There should be one primary one, one or two primary. Maybe it's Facebook, maybe it's Instagram, maybe it's YouTube. But I see a lot of people try to build all of them at once and they're average in each one. I would focus on going all in on one or two and gaining some momentum, mastering those, and then going to the next one. So my friend Evan Carmichael, who does the top 10 videos on YouTube, we did a great call um, <clears throat> about YouTube with my academy, and he talked for an hour on how he's really mastered YouTube. He went from 600,000 subscribers March or April last year to I think he's at 1.4, maybe 1.5 million subscribers now, making a full-time living working not that long, a couple hours a week. He does, he batches things where he works a couple hours a month and goes all in for a couple days, but he's making a living off YouTube because he's mastered that specific uh, platform. So can you master a specific platform and do you know which ones are relevant to your audience, right? And your target market. If you're focused more on millennials, obviously YouTube and Instagram. If you're focused more on <clears throat> a specific demographic that's maybe 35 or 40 to 50 or 55, Facebook's probably the best as well as LinkedIn, right? But do you know how to, when you actually 
get on those platforms, create content that creates some engagement and some feedback, right? That's a big key. You have to have a strategy and an outcome where everything fits in the big picture. So for Facebook or for Instagram, you have to think about what your strategy is and what the ideal outcome is for you. Is it to get engagement? Is it to get them to click on a specific link? Is it to get them to share the image? Is it to get an answer? Is it to get some feedback? Is it to build your following? Most people that post just post because they feel like they like the picture. You want to have a little more intention if you want to actually build a brand online. There's people that are taking random acts of action. Then there's real people that are building brands. And I'm guessing that you guys obviously want to build your brand. And YouTube's a big advantage right now. I see a lot of people not, no one really brought up YouTube. Um, Ishin says, don't forget YouTube. YouTube is huge right now, right? So you got to have a strategy. Talk about the bigger picture, um, but people are focused on how you can help them. Everyone's favorite radio station is what's in it for me, right? So keep that in mind. So you want to have structure so there's no confusion. Make it logical, right? Structure is everything. But get your followers involved. That's a big key. Asking questions, doing contests, right? Um, sharing a, a thought process. And here's a big key. Two things. One, plans are failing. Movements aren't. So create a movement with your audience. Get them involved in what you do and get them involved in the movement that you're creating as a brand. Right, that's a huge, huge key. Create some dialogue, but a big key to building a brand online and social media is a polarizing point of view. What's your polarizing point of view that maybe offends people, but it connects with your target audience at a deeper level? You see, this will separate your audience and the believers and non-believers because it's always better to be loved or hated than tolerated. I was speaking at an event in Vegas with Robert Hershevac from Shark Tank like two years ago. And he was talking behind stage about when you're on TV and when you're, when you're doing content, you can be, they can make you look shorter, taller, bigger, smaller. They can fix up your blemishes. They can do almost anything, but they can't fix boring. And he's like, the one thing you should never be is boring and monotone. And that was, that was kind of a breakthrough for me, which I, I, I'm pretty intense, but there's a lot of content that's amazing, but it's boring. So if your content is top notch, but it's not told or executed in an engaging way, people aren't gonna listen, okay? So keep that in mind. You don't wanna be boring. Also, sometimes, like I said, you have to have a polarizing point of view or find an enemy, right? Find an enemy. Always bring full presence in what you do. Um, tell personal stories, but also bring it back to what's in it for them. And you have to think about what are my points of view that I wanna share with the world? And how is my content gonna be different? So when teaching, it needs to be tactical, where it's a method and it's instructive. It needs to be transformational, where it goes above just motivation and fluff. It has to be transformational, where they can see that it's really gonna help them in the future. And it has to be transcendent, where there's a higher purpose and a higher movement. This is not just about you motivating someone today, or you giving them this product or service that's gonna help them today. Right? So when it's transcendent, when you have a polarizing point of view and people know you're passionate, if you give a speech, if you're giving a TED talk, if you're doing something that you're passionate about, you should never have notes. It should come from the heart and the gut of what really, really frustrates you or lights you up. Your job as an entrepreneur is to spark your own fire. And when your content comes from the heart and from the gut and you're, you're sharing something that maybe you haven't shared that might offend people, but you're not fearing what people think, you're gonna get so much engagement, it's crazy. Okay, so that's, that's the game, is creating something that's a movement, that's engaging, find an enemy, but think about what point of view do I wanna share with the world that I know will help them?